The release of Encanto Mia and Genshin's 2.4 update has given us a better understanding of the very beginnings of Teyvad, and more context to the origins of Inazuma and how the region got to where it's at in present day of the story. In this video I will be talking about the complete history of Encanto Mia from what we know at this point. Be warned there will be spoilers for the Encanto Mia questline in 2.4, so if you haven't finished it, I'd recommend doing so before watching. Anyways, let's get started. At the very beginnings of Teyvat's history, it was ruled by the Seven Dragon Sovereigns, in which each of the Seven Dragons had their own elements. These dragons were also known as Vishaps and were incredibly intelligent, in which they could adapt to almost anything. We figure out that the entire region of Teyvat was ruled by a single united civilization, but this was until an unknown god named Fanes showed up and completely wrecked havoc, disrupting the Seven Dragon Sovereigns and causing them to flee away. Fanes established itself as the new ruler of the world and the dragons had vanished, with many of them arriving at a large underground cave system as they could no longer stay at the surface. This large cave system deep underground is what we now know as Enconomia, and those Vishaps that ran away ended up terrorizing and preying on the people who lived there. The humans who lived there named those Vishaps as dragon hairs, and they soon figured out that light was the source that scared away Vishaps and could make them weaker. But without the correct technology, they weren't able to use a large-scale light to scare off the Vishaps consistently and reliably, so they continued to be harmed by them. At one point, things seemed incredibly dim in the region and that their prayers to the gods had no answer. This was until a man named Abrax created an artificial sun which is also called Helios. This sun provided a massive amount of light for the people of Enconomia and it was able to scare away the Vishaps completely causing a new era to form with the people being finally liberated from the dragons. Abrax was essentially a hero and the people had created statues of him due to his contributions. It is important to note that Abrax had learned to create the Helios with the support of a god, Istaroth. She had helped awaken his knowledge in building the artificial sun and that she had ruled Teyvat at some point in time after the seven dragons were destroyed by Fanes. Now since Enconomia was free from the Vishaps, they were almost completely under control from the upper class and the nobles of the region. They manufactured a religion that worshipped Helios as their god, and Abrax as a prophet of sorts. The leader of the religious group was named as the Sun Child, and was essentially manipulated by the nobles. Since it was a child, it would be far easier to manipulate and blame all the issues onto it. The Sun Child was basically a puppet leader and had relatively zero control over Enconomia, and since everything was blamed onto the Sun Child, the people had extreme hate for the fake leader, with all the blame being focused on it and not the nobles. The nobles knew that eventually the Sun Child would become older and wiser, so they decided to enact a special ritual to kill each of them. This ritual contained of rising them into the artificial sun Helios until they were burned to death by the extreme temperatures of the sun. It was clear that the nobles were incredibly evil, but the people of Enconomia didn't do much to stop it and were surprisingly unreactive to the extreme rituals that took place on the Sun Children. Although there was a resistance group of some sorts that opposed the nobles, with their leader named Spartacus being imprisoned and tortured to the point to where he's unable to recall his own memories itself. Abrax himself did not like what the nobles were doing, and with there being little fight against it, he took it to himself to call out the nobles on their lies, and that he wanted to be acknowledged for building the Helios itself due to its immense wisdom. To which the nobles replied by using the Sun Child to convict Abrax of treason. He had gone through the same ritual that the Sun Childs went through and was raged towards the Helios being killed by the extreme temperatures. A sad end for the man who essentially saved the people of the region due to his contributions and wisdom. It just shows how unfair parts of Teyvat can really be. I'm surprised to see how dark Mihoyo has truly made Enconomia's past, although I do think it goes hand in hand with the region's eerie setting. After the death of Abrax, the Archon War had finally begun, which was about 2000 years in the past from the current parts of the story. The god named Orobashi, who was known as the Great Serpent, had fled Inazuma and went into the depths of Underground, in which Orobashi had stumbled upon the region of Enconomia. After a kid had asked Orobashi to rule their nation, the Serpent agreed and decided to go against the Sun Children and the nobles who controlled them, ending the era of domination from the evil nobles fairly easily. Orobashi had given the people of the region an understanding of Narukami's culture and gave them the knowledge of the new technologies in the surface world. Orobashi had basically helped bring Enkanomiya to the best position it's ever been in history. 
This was all until the Great Serpent had encountered the records predating human civilization in Teyvat. Figuring out that Fanes and the people of Celestia weren't actually from this world, and were essentially aliens. Celestia did not want this to be figured out, thinking that this information is far too dangerous to be revealed to any person, especially a god of higher status. Celestia then ordered to obliterate Oborashi. Since Orobashi had helped bring freedom to the people of Enkanomiya and had loved them dearly, the god decided to go through the suicide route, instead of dying at the hands of Celestia. Orobashi decided to go to war against the Electro Archon while trying to give its people more land. The Great Serpent was then defeated by the Shogun but he had helped lift the people above the surface. The area that it had created is now known in present day of the game as Watatsumi Island. The Sangomiya clan was also created as a religious group to help establish a worship system for Orobashi, in which they still worship the being currently. At this point, the region of Enkanomiya was almost completely abandoned, but the people still live and thrive in Watatsumi Island, likely perishing or meeting a dark end if Orobashi hadn't defeated the nobles. Even though Enkanomiya has had a dark history, it has ended relatively well with the people of Watatsumi Island living free from the nobles and Vishaps. Although there are still conflicts between the Shogun due to her killing their leader essentially. We also learned more about the times before Teyvat was ruled by the gods, and how evil Celestia really is. I believe that at this point that Celestia is clearly an evil organization who seeks to control and conquer the people living on the surface world. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will catch you all in a bit.